If prayer gives us unhindered and bold access to the presence and the power of God, and if God longs to demonstrate His power and His love on the platform of our lives, how can we experience answered prayer? What I'm about to tell you can totally transform your life. And here it is. God wants to answer your prayers. And even better than that, God will answer your prayers. I'm going to use a parable that Jesus taught His disciples when they asked Him to teach them to pray to explain to you how I can make these bold statements. God wants to answer your prayers and God will answer your prayers. The parable is found in Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13. Then teaching them more about prayer, Jesus used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose your friend, he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me, the door is locked for the night and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? An interesting parable about what my, my Bible actually categorizes it, the parable of the reluctant friend. But yet Jesus used this parable to teach us to pray. I'm going to use it to show you that God always answers prayers and God wants to answer our prayers. So here's the deal. Here's this guy, I'm going to call him the prayer. And in the middle of the night, he has a friend come to visit. This friend comes to visit and this friend is hungry. So this guy, our prayer, doesn't have anything to feed him, but he has a friend who does. So with great certainty, he goes to his friend's house and he asks him for food. Here's my observations. First of all, the prayer had a personal relationship with both his friend in need and with his friend who had the provision for the need. Only a person that you know well would come to you in the middle of the night and then express his hunger to you. So we know that they had a personal relationship with one another. And then out of his friend's desperate need, the prayer, which we might could call an intercessor because he's going to his friend on behalf of his other friend, so the prayer goes to his friend. Now we also know that they too had a personal relationship. There's so much more to this relationship than just what we read in the parable. And it is assumed. Because we have friends in our lives that are friends, but then we have friends in our lives that we can actually interrupt in the middle of the night and expect them to come help our need. This is the kind of friend this guy has. So it goes to his friend and he interrupts him in the middle of the night and then, of course, he has the confusion of his friend not wanting to get up in the middle of the night to help him with his need. Now, my observations about this friend who is awakened in the middle of the night. Why did our fellow, the prayer, go to him? Well, we, he went to him because he was his friend and he was comfortable going to him. He also went to him because he knew that this friend had bread. Sometimes we make prayers so complicated when actually it's quite simple. God has what we need. We have a need for what God has to give us. So this friend goes to his friend because he has bread, and he also goes to him because he knows this friend well enough to know that the bread that he has, he will willingly give if he only asks. But then comes the, the strange part of the story, the, the oops part, what happened? So, with some surprise, I would imagine, the friend who's in bed, the sleepy friend, I'll call him, 
hollers out and says, don't bother me, we've already gone to bed. Sure, I have bread, but I'm not going to get up out of bed and give it to you. So what does our prayer do? He just keeps on knocking. And you begin to think, why is he knocking? Why does he keep on knocking? The, the scripture even calls what he does shameless persistence. And with his shameless persistence, this is what he's saying. He's saying, I know you're my friend. I know I've awakened you in the middle of the night, but I know you've got bread. And I know that the bread you have will satisfy my friend in need. And then he begins with his shameless persistence to say, I'm not going away until you get up and give me this bread. And eventually Jesus says to his disciples that the guy in bed gets up, gives his friend bread. I believe it doesn't say this. But I think he gave him more than just a loaf of bread. He gave him probably five loaves of bread, some goat's milk and cheese to boot, just to get him to go home and to be satisfied. And therein is the parable of the reluctant friend that Jesus used to teach us how to pray. And here's what we gain from this prayer. Jesus then says to us, if we will ask and keep on asking, if we'll knock and keep on knocking, if we will seek and keep on seeking, we will get the answer to our prayers. Oh, we give up far too easily. We meet with a bit of resistance and we make the assumption that there's something wrong with our asking or there's something wrong with God's willingness to give. And in this parable, Jesus is saying to us that what God has, he has really for one purpose, and that is to meet our need. You see, heaven is pregnant with glorious riches. Heaven is bursting at the seams with all that we need here on earth. And Jesus is eager for us, and he urged us to come to God in prayer, believing until we receive the glorious riches that he is more than willing to give. In fact, he goes on in this parable to remind us that a father's child, when he comes to him asking, what is it he says for a, um, if you ask for a, a fish, you're not going to give him a snake. If you ask for an egg, you're not going to give him a scorpion. Of course not. And even though you who are evil and don't know the half of it would not do that, of course your heavenly father would never, ever torment you with unanswered prayer or torture you by riddles and giving you what you didn't ask for. No, God is more than eager to give you exactly what you need in response to what you're praying. How much more, he says, how much more will your heavenly father give? How much more will your heavenly father give you what you need? How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And therein is the subtle truth to prayer that so many people miss. God answers prayer. He's eager to do so. And the answer to our prayers is always more of Him. God answers our prayers with Himself by giving us of the Holy Spirit. Thank all these things. And when you pray this week, I want you to be very honest and give to God whatever bodacious request you have. That, that something, that thing, that you know that only God can do. Write it out on a piece of paper. Lord, I am asking you to write it out. I want you to put that piece of paper on your refrigerator where you're gonna see it more than once in a day. Every time you go to get something out, Put that paper on that, and every time you see that prayer, I want you to say out loud, how much more? For it is God's delight to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask or imagine in response to our confident praying, knowing that it is God's desire to answer our prayers and that it is God's intent to answer our prayers. God answers prayer.